Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today we're talking about something that living organisms are very good at, chemistry. Enzymes can perform chemical reactions that are more efficient and specific than anything we can achieve in a chemical factory. Enzymes also don't require high temperature, high pressure, or the use of dangerous or environmentally damaging reactants. So the chemical industry is full of very cool opportunities for applied synthetic biology. Let's start by reviewing the basics of a simple chemical reaction. Here, for example, is what we can do with tryptophanase. The ACE part of the name reminds us that this is an enzyme, and the tryptophan part reminds us that this acts on tryptophan. Tryptophanase occurs naturally in many organisms, or we can express it synthetically just like we would any other protein. The enzyme takes a single substrate, tryptophan, and produces three products, indole, 2 aminopropinoate and a hydrogen atom. We draw the chemical reaction arrow in only one direction to indicate that the reaction is irreversible. Once the tryptophan is split up, the enzyme can't reassemble it because that would require an input of energy. We can also write out a chemical reaction in terms of the chemical formulas of the individual molecules. If we do it this way, we can remember to count the total number of each kind of atom in the product and reactant side. Chemical reactions can't create or destroy atoms, so by checking that our reaction is balanced, we can avoid making any stupid mistakes or forgetting about any stray molecules. For example, if we were being lazy, it would be easy to forget about this little proton over here, but the reaction does in fact produce acid, which might be important if we're going to produce a lot of it. Okay, everybody feel good about writing an enzymatic reaction? Substrate, product, direction of reaction, atom balance. You probably recognize tryptophan as a basic amino acid present in all proteins. You may not recognize indole, but if you ever work with E. coli, you soon will. See, indole is responsible for the, uh, the fecal odor of E. coli. It's the E. coli in your gut and other bacteria there produce it in large quantities during digestion. So. Thank you, tryptophanase. Because of you, we have successfully made poop smell. Not necessarily something that we want, but bear with me. We're going to take it to the next level with a slightly more complicated enzyme. This is flavin monooxygenase. It takes molecules like indole and adds a single oxygen molecule. We can use it to convert indole to 2-hydroxyindole, then add another oxygen molecule to produce estatin, Estatin reacts spontaneously with itself to produce indigo, which is a blue pigment best known as the color of blue jeans. Now, once upon a time, indigo was blue gold in Europe and in India and in Africa. It was extracted from plants. It was very difficult to produce and very precious. It was the foundation of trade empires and great fortunes. Now today, indigo, indigo is made in chemical factories. It's much less precious, but it's still pretty cool to see how we can make it in living cells using just two enzymes. So, we went from tryptophan, a normal dietary amino acid, to indole, the smell of poop, to indigo, a useful and beautiful pigment. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride, but that's life in the exciting world of metabolic engineering and enzyme catalyzed chemical reactions. So, until next time, stay cool.